came out of the manager isn't here on the day before the match? No, it's only very simple. This plan was in place beforehand, um, and it's obviously to give give the bosses much time in terms of preparation, the quick turnaround in the game as well. So that was always been the case. So there's no change and on there's anything. No, there's no fear that there'll be a, a confusion among the players as to who the real gaffer is. Totally, no no fear at all because the boss is the boss. There's clear lines on that. As I mentioned, this is um, the plan that was in place beforehand and we felt there was no reason to change it. He talked about a management team with yourself, uh, Paddy, and obviously the rest of the members of the staff as well. Uh, in your review of the game, what have you learned? Yeah, look, obviously, Quiven will speak about that as well, but in, most importantly, you reflect straight away, but the manager wants to get across as clearly as he, as he can, as quickly as he can, obviously what he's looking for. So the good references, and obviously the references that we have to improve on. Simple as that. You, you play against a team uh, that have just been in the Euros final. You know you're going to be under plenty of pressure in a game like that. And obviously because the fact it was England too brings that extra bit more scrutiny as well. So clearly room for improvement. We know that. We know England were the best team on the day. But now, thankfully, you have another chance to put in a performance against Greece quite quickly. Came out talked about, I suppose, a lack of confidence at times as well. Um, how can you put that right in such a short space of time? Yeah, look, that's the beauty of having the game so quickly. Um, I think that's the benefit when you have that two-game window. You know, it's a short turnaround, and even when you think ahead to October, November, it's a Thursday, Sunday scenario. So it's even quicker again in terms of that scenario. But it's very clear. We know we have things to improve on, and we work on it. We get the chance to work on it today. And obviously, put and we'll have more time in the morning to touch on things as well before the prep, uh, final preparation, travelling into the game. Creeping, although the result didn't go with us, I'm sure your confidence must be high. Because would you say that was your best game for Ireland? Um, yeah, certainly, definitely up there. I think um, had a few had a few saves to make and stuff, and thankfully was able to help the team. Um, but obviously, personally for me, it's it's not about that. It's obviously about it's about the team um, and getting the right results for the country. So I think, yeah, personally happy with my own performance. But I think um, we definitely need to improve as a team and yeah, it's set to a big game on Tuesday. Yeah, please, thank you. Hi, John. Uh, how do you feel about taking such a leading role at the moment? It's it's not a leading role. The I'm the assistant. The leader is the boss. And that's clear, as I mentioned, um, the full focus on the plan beforehand. This was all always in place in our itinerary. Um, so that was always the case. And the manager now has obviously we're trying to put ideas in the, uh, the meeting this morning. And obviously the last couple since the England game, it's obviously debrief. It's a quick turnaround, quick turnaround in terms of and just trying to get things sorted. And this was always the case. That was the plan beforehand, and it's full focus on Greece. As you mentioned there, there are two big games in four days. What gives you confidence that Ireland can deliver a performance tomorrow night? Yeah, look, obviously you you, you reflect on um, Greece against Finland. Um, we were obviously you get the the footage of that as quickly as you can. Um, you, you put a plan in place to probably the scoreline. Was a little bit unfair, maybe you would say, to Finland as well when you actually watch the full game. Um, the mistake from the, the, the Finnish goalkeeper obviously gave gave Greece a, a big advantage in the game, and they were able to kind of take confidence from that. So, um, but it's about us as well, and about how we go about things, and making sure that we have that compactness in the team, that aggressiveness in the team, and that um, confidence to go and implement what what the plan is. Nathan, please. John, uh, Himmer had said that you'd had a big influence in the selection of the squad. The tactics the last day seemed very similar to what had happened in the friendlies you've been in charge of, and now you're sitting here today. Can you understand why there's so many questions, so much confusion about who's actually in charge? No, look, it's clear, um, Nathan, that I'm the assistant. I don't know why there has to be this constant, um, the boss is the boss. It's very simple. The players know that, you can ask Creeve about that, the meetings that were coming across, the plans in place. So I don't know why you have to keep going on about in that. For me, personally, it's clear from us, from the staff's point of view and from the players' point of view.
Well, I think a lot of it's coming from him as well and saying that he will need a couple of camps to... Yeah, well, that's natural. If you'd imagine if I had went to Iceland and took a job over there, you're going to lean on the support of the staff behind you. Very simple. Uh, Queen can I just ask about your club situation, obviously, a new goalkeeper is coming in next summer. Does that change your future at the club? Um, yeah, this, I think I made it clear probably in the last few years now that I want to go and go be a number one and, and play play um, week in week out. Um, so the, the clubs made that decision to, to to get another goalkeeper in as well, which yeah, obviously from the outside um, looking in, um, looks like they've made a, a decision um, to go a different direction. So yeah, but um, my my ambition has always been clear and has been clear the last few seasons. That I want to go be a number one and play week in week out, and sometimes from the outside looking in, it looks like maybe that's 100% um, my decision, and maybe at times it's it's not always in my hands as well. Amy Spalman, please. John, you played in Ireland teams that have difficult nights like Saturday. How how do you deal with that as a as a player and then bounce back two three days later? Ah, look, that's the ups and downs of it. it you know how competitive international football is. Um, and as I mentioned, the beauty of having that game the next a few days later gives everyone the chance to bounce back as quickly as possible um, and improve performances, improve everything about about the performance if we can. And then hopefully that leads. I think that's the key bit for us. If you improve the performance levels, hopefully that eventually will bring a consistent results that in our favour. I think that's the key bit we have to focus on, making sure we're hard to beat. And then we go and win some matches on the back of that. Gavin Keane, please. Hey, hi, Queen. Did you want to leave Liverpool in the summer and did it come close to happening? Um, yeah, like I said, obviously, um, my ambition was, was to go out and play and, and be a number one. Um, I think the, the news have reported it and it's been, it's been reported that, yeah, Liverpool did reject a few, bid, a few bids as well. So, um, yeah, like I say, it's not, it's not ours in my hands to, to, to fully make the decision. So. Um, yeah, my, my ambition is clear that I think I'm, I'm good enough and yeah, I want to go out and prove, um, play week in, week out. And just one for John, can you give us an insight into why you believe the back three system is still the best for this group of players given obviously it's been played for a number of years now and the results haven't been? I wouldn't say it's, it's what I believe. Um, every game you take individually, Gavin, in terms of uh, what strengths and different things have and obviously first and foremost, your own group of players that you look for as well, so you find, you find that balance in between and then hopefully take each game on its merits and put, put, put a plan in place. Ed Lee, please. That, that's Ed yeah. yeah. <laughs> John, how are you? Um, I suppose just asking in terms of looking ahead to tomorrow's game, um, how much focus really goes in terms of the analysis it goes back to the two games and that, that group or else how much is almost more, more important to the focus maybe understood the most recent performance? Yeah, it's, it's obviously you, you reflect on but it's, the, the games against them because obviously the players will be familiar with individuals and teams and what they've done then but then you have to understand it's a new manager in place as well there and what they've done. He's obviously um, a Serbian man, Jovanovic, he's, he's managed in Greece, uh, club teams as well so he's familiar with the players and um, it's, it's quite similar in, in a sense in terms of systems, what they've been doing, but little tweaks here and there. And obviously, it's just the one game that we've we've had to, to witness against Finland. So, um, but it's great that the in the sense the lads will hopefully have that um, bit of knowledge to know that there's no under uh, underestimation of this Greece team now. They know they're a very good team, so the levels will have to be increased. Just to think, one of the things uh, in the previous games, the two teams, Greece had a habit of pulling the team out of shape with their changing the changing uh, play and stuff quite quickly. Um, how do you see your? Is it how important it is now for this team to really work as a unit when out of possession? And did you learn from Saturday that that needs to be like in terms of pressing, maybe higher press? I don't know. What's, what what is the solution there? No, it's, it's, it's always a case of um, the team being compact and a unit. Um, but that has to come from everyone in the team, not just when you talk about back, back four, back five, uh, midfield unit, front unit, 
the pressing, it's a combination of it all together. And the areas on the pitch that you're looking for to set the triggers, to set presses. So all those things come into it beforehand. And the players the players are fully aware beforehand in terms of the timings, etc. The triggers to set it off and what you look for. John, here uh, hey, Just reflecting back on those two games, particularly the Athens game, how much of a punch in the gut was that game like seeing that put so much emphasis on got a win over there and really kick start the campaign, but it just didn't happen like they were really torn on the side. No, exactly. And that's the you have to remember that obviously the experience of their team and the knowledge and it, I think I think when I mentioned it, I think I might have said it before in terms of I think maybe the Irish public in the sense of thinking all oh, Greece but then when you actually delve into where their players are playing the profile of their players to know that it's a real hardened experienced team and uh, it's also now a case of like I, I mentioned taking each game on its merit it's a new manager in place for them as well that's just had that one game so far, but obviously got off to it. When you, sent, when you get a goal like that to give you a boost at home, it was a fantastic start for them. But now obviously it's their first away game under the manager. Will they tweak out a bit different? In general, he's he's like to keep things fairly fairly similar to what he's done with his club and obviously so far in his, 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 the game that he's played for Greece. So it gives us a few reference points, but ultimately it comes back to us as well. Neil, please. Hi, John. Um, hey, Neil. I appreciate you don't want keep answering the same question, but I think there are kind of two issues here. Last week, Stephen Hunt said you knew all along somebody was uh, was coming in as manager and you were getting the job, which was pretty much at odds with what you told us all along. So I'm just wondering, this, first of all, Stephen correcting what he said. Say that again, sorry. Stephen Hunt said on radio that you knew whatever about the public, you knew all along that somebody else was getting the job, that you weren't. Just, that know. was uh, clearly what I was told all along from Mark, clearly. Okay, and Mark also said that Hamer was the first choice since March. Is there not ample time between March and September for somebody to, to get to know the players in that time, especially when he was based in Europe, he wasn't based in Jamaica? The manager has plenty of knowledge of the players. But he, he has spoken of a bit of a deficit there in knowledge and needing to improve it. And when it came to squad selection, which he said that to you. No, the manager has plenty of knowledge of the players. And as I mentioned before, I'm the assistant coach, the number two to the boss. So, as I mentioned, the manager has plenty of knowledge. Mark McCann, please. Um, Queen, obviously Saturday showed, you know, that's not the case, but was there ever a concern with you that your club situation might kind of stunt your development as well? Um... Not for me personally, I think I've always been confident in myself and, and my ability to, to, to perform um, when given the opportunity. Um, you know, I always always train to a high standard, um, I'm very professional and always, and always prepare correctly whether I'm playing or not. So I think if you take those attributes, um, you'll always have a good chance of, of um, playing well anyway. So it, yeah, I'm always, I'm always confident if, even if I'm not playing regularly at club level, that I'm, I've got the ability and, and I'm capable enough to, to put in good performances um, when I'm playing. Jump on. Good evening. Just on your club situation, like, is there any chance of that change in January? Have you had any discussion with the manager once the window closed, or are you committed for the season now? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. Obviously, I think it was it's a quick turnaround since since the windows just closed. Maybe maybe the last week. Um, like I say, yeah, there was there was some bids rejected in in the summer. Um, so I don't know if that will get revisited in in January. Maybe, but. Um, yeah, them discussions obviously need to be had in the coming months, but um, for now, obviously, for the next few months, I'll be committed to Liverpool. Thanks. Alan? Yeah, thank you. Have you found it much different under the new manager and the new goalkeeper coach? Yeah, listen, it's obviously, it's obviously been a bit of change. It's always going to be a change when, when, a, new, when a new boss comes in. Um, but like I say, he's coming with some new ideas, but also it's such a short period of time and it's his first camp that we also need to, to use the basis of what we've been doing the last few camps with John and Paddy and stuff that it takes it takes time to adapt to new ideas and stuff so I think we need to yeah listen to the, the manager's new ideas but also we need to be implementing the stuff that we've been doing in the last few camps because if we if we do too much change too quickly then obviously that's that's very difficult for us players to, to adapt to um, so yeah he's coming with a lot of 
new ideas and stuff and we're trying to take that on board and work on it but it's it's obviously you need to maybe taper some some of his new ideas as well and try to work on that throughout, throughout these camps because it's, it's a short period of time so it takes it takes time to adapt but um yeah we're we're working hard to, to try implement his new ideas so obviously it's it's short periods it's it's very difficult for international managers to come in and really implement their their style it's different when you're at a club and you're working every day but it's it's if here it's a few days we come in and then we're playing a game it's it's hard to implement those new ideas but you know we're having meetings every day we're really working hard and he's trying to get his message across and we're we're an open group and we're willing to learn and we're trying to take everything on board so hopefully by October we'll obviously be a bit more prepared and we'll have more of an understanding of what the manager wants us to do and yeah it's also about getting the results as well so um, that's important um, but yeah I think we'd be obviously more prepared in October. Aidan please. Cleveland, um, Sammy Smolik said after the game on Saturday Cleveland that the team needed to play with more belief. Just your take on that, is that just the case against England simply because of their quality second at the Euros? Or is it a more general thing that that sense of belief and confidence has to be found? Um, so I think, I think personally within the squad I think we definitely have a lot of belief and, and confidence in ourselves. Um, maybe a start we had on, on, on Saturday didn't help, you know, conceding early on in the game maybe dense to confidence I think um, and like you say it's, it was going to be an uphill battle always against England second second in the European Championships and obviously a, full, a squad full of great players um, I think definitely within this squad I know I know the quality I see it every day when we're training I know how good good this squad is and definitely we have confidence in ourselves and I think if we get the good result against Greece that will give us even more confidence and then we can push on and, and do well in this group Dan please John, um, the manager spoke on Saturday about sort of the acting situations on the pitch, maybe the players being slow at times, and Seamus is out, obviously a big figure as well. I mean, do you need more leadership from this group now in terms of recognising situations on the pitch, recognising maybe when to, when to go? Yeah, look, at a fair point in terms of that. That will happen, I think, when the, you see the group of players gather more, more games, more caps. That influence has to kind of grow and grow. I think Seamus even mentioned it himself recently too in terms of players coming into the camp realising that it's not just coming in for the caps, it's coming in to get the tournaments and I think that's the big thing and a key bit of that will definitely be when you say kind of the younger players just making sure that they are stepping up and that's the key thing about communication and having that responsibility because um, obviously there has to be that improvement from the younger group to kind of really kick on, like Quivin has spoken about, you see it, you see it on the training pitch when the lads are working, that determination to kind of want to improve, but now it's having that confidence to initiate in the games and as you said, to recognise and fix different moments themselves. Philip, uh, John, a couple of things. Um, you're, you're here this morning. Do you think you'll be doing this again before the October game, or is this just a warm no, this will be where uh, we'll speak, myself and the boss will speak about it afterwards, but I'd imagine the boss will be very, uh, will be will be in this situation, but it's that's something we'll kind of debrief after the camp. Okay. Um, I'm not expecting any state secrets, uh, but with Seamus out, there's no Shane Duffy and there's no John Egan, who are the candidates for captain? Ah, look, it, it, that's up. Um, we've obviously spoken about it, and oh, you'll look, you'll you'll obviously see it tomorrow night. But when you think of the spine of the team, um, in terms of you'd be looking at potentially man next to me. You could be looking at Darrell O'Shea. You could be looking at Nathan Collins. There is leaders out there in the team as well, and to have that ability to lead. Um, also, uh, Evan Ferguson. Just what's his state of fitness? And is he fit enough to start tomorrow? Yeah, look, it's it's obviously you've been out for a few months and you're building that up slowly, and it's uh, it's it's a case of he's been training well. Yes, he is fit to start. Will he will he start? Let's wait and see. He is fit enough to start. Needs. Exactly. It's one Thanks of them, Tony. Is. Gavin, one last one. One last. I'm indicated that he wouldn't be until October, uh, up to the level of fitness when we were talking to him yesterday. Or, um, yeah, but that's what I mean. It, it's we don't want to get, it's talking about secrets or whatever. It's a case he's building up. He's been out for a few months. Technically, is he available to start? Yes, every player that's in the squad is available to start. Thank you very much, everyone.